morning from a campground we had all to ourselves because it is the low season in Brazil. Timing doesn't always work out perfect. We're going to be touring most of Brazil during the middle of winter. But for now we are headed about 30 minutes down the road to a town called Gramado. Which everyone, everyone that gave us tips on where to go in Brazil said you have to go to Gramado. So we're going. We have made it to the city of Gramado and it is a Sunday and it is a place that a lot of people like to visit. We just drove through town. There are lots of stores, restaurants. There's some history to this town and we're going to share that with you. But what we've decided we're going to do is we're going to just get parked up and we're going to let Sunday roll right on by and we're gonna show you this town on Monday. We'll share the history. There's a lot of chocolate, there's some fondue. You could tell from our drive through just then, it definitely has a lot of European influence and it is a really cool looking town. But we're gonna grab some lunch, chill, and show you the town tomorrow. Buffets are very popular in Brazil and it's a great opportunity to try all the different local dishes they serve here. They generally have a lot of salads and sides, traditional sides, and then they also have a meat carving station. In these buffets you generally either pay by the kilogram or sometimes there's a one fee for all you can eat. Biggest problem we have at these buffets is we always tend to overeat because the food is so yummy. All right, guys. Lunch was yummy, fast, yummy, and we got there just in time. We basically walked up to that restaurant when it was opening and it was still half full by then. As we were leaving, there was a wait all the way down the stairs. I bet there's 30 people waiting just to get in the door to eat at that place. And uh, our house is right next door. So we're headed home and we both think we might need to take a nap after that meal. All right, while Snow's taking a nap, I'm gonna sneak out and do a couple things. First of all, Gramado is an incredible walking city with so much beautiful stuff to look at. I don't wanna spoil it because tomorrow Snow and I are going for a walk but I am the scout. And secondly, I really need a new pair of shoes. I've been looking for shoes since, well, for a few months. And to be honest with you, it's hard to find the shoes in my size. I'm a size 12, and a lot of places will have a size 12. Oftentimes when I find the shoe, it's the size, the one size or two size 12 shoes they have in the shop. It's not one that I would choose and so to find the exact shoe that I want has been a bit of a challenge but I'm hoping in an international city like Ramado I can find something so let's go have a look I've been needing a new pair of sneakers these things I got in Argentina are all walked out they're falling apart and in this little shopping district in Ramado I found a nice little shoe store. I've been having a hard time finding them in my size, so hopefully I'll find something here that'll work. All right, man, it is eyeballing this tree right here. She'll climb a tree. What you doing, pumpkin? What are you thinking? You don't like that noise, do you? No. No more. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> we got Trigamado yesterday here in southern Brazil, and we drove through the town, as you guys already know. And to be honest with you, the town, it was Sunday, it was packed. The traffic was insane. 
and you could just see from the streets that it was really touristy. Now, we had a big lunch yesterday, got some rest. I went out to explore the town, most importantly to get some new sneakers, which I desperately needed. I scored big, and once you get on the ground, you actually see how cool this town is. Now, it is touristy, but this place is super, super nice. And I think you'll understand why we're saying that. Let's go explore Gramado. So Gramado has sort of like a European, more like a German or a Bavarian feel. This is a themed city. Everybody plays along the businesses and even the residential areas. All right, you can see a guy up there. He's trimming the trees and those are monkey trees. Now, we saw monkey trees, and I don't know the name, but we saw monkey trees in Chile. These are definitely a different variation. They kind of seem a bit more piney. And it looks a little bit more like they have to trim them up, but you can kind of see the guy wrestling with the big branches down there. And down here is their little community park. And they have a big fountain. And uh, it's just a nice little park area, natural area. Couple of things about Gramado. First, we are in Brazil in the winter time. This is low season for the majority of Brazil. But what we have learned is that people love, local Brazilians love to come to Gramado in the winter time. It is where they can come up here and get a true winter feel. So a lot of wintertime vacations happen here. So it's actually high season here in Gramado, which would explain all of the people. Also, this place is a really big hotspot at Christmas time. Another cool thing about this area is it is known for its hydrangeas, but unfortunately we missed the bloom by a few months. There still are a lot of flowers, but we're here in winter time, so I'm sure it's a lot more colorful during the spring. Now the reason there's this, such a European flair to this place is its history. We, uh, we have learned that it was originally settled by the Portuguese back in the early 1800s, but not long after that, the first wave of European settlers, mainly from Germany, but a lot of them from Italy too, started to come over in the mid to late 1800s. There was another wave, big wave, of European immigrants in the 1920s. And that is about when this area started to take on such a European flair. A lot of the Germans and Italians settled here and Gramado was born. It was also a very important trading village back in those days. So now, every year, more and more Europeans immigrate to here. So it has that flair. They are taking advantage of it for the tourism, and we're gonna show you around. Welcome to Gramado's windiest road. It's sort of a take on the San Francisco windy road. I don't know that it's used for traffic, but it's definitely widely used for Instagram photographs and pictures and videos. As you can see, people are lined up. The Brazilian version of Build-A-Bear. <laughs> Unicorns, bears, sheep, pandas, Kriamagos. <laughs> Smells 
So this is kind of like a wax museum. However, everything is made from chocolate, including like the monkey's banana there, the toucan and the berries that he's eating, the bridge, the butterfly on the bridge, and you can actually see the chocolate plant right there, the chocolate pods. Chocolate is very, very popular in this little town of Gramado, so we felt compelled to come here and see one of their main features. And here we have a little scale of what it looks like, the chocolate process made from chocolate, the chocolate pod coming from the tree. First they gotta dry the seeds and take the pulp off. Uh, that would be this process right here. And then once they get the pulp off, they're gonna crush it and grind it. Tree down at the Taj Mahal chocolate. We are taking a trip around the world in our van and the Charlie Ch Chocolate Factory here is taking us a trip around the world. This is the Great Wall of China and we've walked on that Great Wall of China just outside of Beijing. And some more Chinese artifacts. I am guessing that is Buddha right there and then a dragon. And a place that is on our list, we've yet to visit right here in Brazil, Rio de Janeiro. And some icons from back home in the US, the Hollywood sign, <laughs> be Mount Rushmore, and our presidents. And then of course our famous Statue of Liberty. Now there is a store here in Brazil called Havan, and they frequently have little uh, Statue of Liberty statues out in front. A little chocolate. I think um, this is from the Leaning Tower of Pisa right here. <laughs> Part of it melted. It's chocolatey. Mm. stay too long in a town that specializes in chocolate. I would eat it all. You into the gift shop, of course, where they have a full assortment of chocolates, chocolate figurines. They do have a little restaurant here. Some wine, some coffee, some sandwiches, some other little things. They also Sounds like they have some construction going on today. And they got the chocolate dudes. Here's the little kid and Kurt coming out. Incredible Hulk drew him in. <laughs>
Italian steak salad for me. See, they still. All right, when you're at a fancy restaurant, what do you do? You order a fancy drink, and that's exactly what Snow has. What is it there, Snow? It's an Italian soda. Strawberry flavored. Look at those fresh strawberries in there. Salad looks yummy. What's on that thing? We've well, got steak, tomatoes, greens, the salsa, heart of palm. I don't know what else. We've got to get in there and see. So we just had a yummy lunch there. Light lunch. And this place has a lot of restaurants, a lot of shops. A lot of the restaurants have the chairs covered in like the sheep's cloth. And we just walked down a row that had all sorts of, well, I think they had like condos, apartments, houses, interior design, furniture, all that type of stuff. It was very high-end home stuff. But this road just goes on and on with all sorts of different shops. A lot of them very high end, delicious desserts, chocolates, coffees, all sorts of trinket stores and things like that. Look at this. Wow. I guarantee you if I stayed here, I could gain weight without any problem. Hola, boy tarde. So my grandma used to have a couple of these. So some of them have little doors where a cuckoo pops out. I think they all do. I'm not sure, but I do think they work mostly off the weights. So grandma used to have to pull them down. Germany. Ah, cuckoo! <laughs> ah. This is annoying. Can you put one in the van? Yeah. I wonder how that'd work while we were bouncing around. Hola, one size. <laughs> they got all the mate cups and straws right here. If you're gonna get a mate, this would be where to do it. This is a local artisanal jelly, jam, honey stuff, but everything is loaded with sugar or salt. Don't say leche. So, uh. so good. So, so sweet. In the center of Gramado's bustling markets and shops, as we've been showing you, is this beautiful church. It's the Church of San Pedro and in 1917 this church was built of wood and then rebuilt of stone in 1943. The stonework of the church is amazing and yet simple with high ceilings and beautiful stained glass. The inside is a quiet and humble sanctuary. It's actually the most photographed site here in Gramado, 
and it is a beautiful church and if you look on the outside here it is lined with statues of the 12 apostles and they're all ornately carved beautiful statues and outside just around the corner is the fountain of love where you'll find many people swearing their vows with little paddle locks attached to the gate around the fountain and of course taking loads of Instagrams. So after spending a couple days in Granada, what I can tell you is it is a beautiful city. This city, this town area is meant, built for strolling around. As they've already said, there's tons of little shops, but every place where there's an opportunity for some flowers or some plants, they have really nice flora. All the structures are cool. It's a nice town and really it's high end meaning the yeah, stores and fancy this, restaurants. Yeah, they they it's, it's high end but it's nice stuff and they pretty much have anything here. So the cultural diversity in Brazil is off the charts. That is for sure. It is time to leave the fun little European style town of Gramado in the southernmost state of Brazil. We had a great time strolling around. Yeah, it is a wonderful city to stroll around. What I will tell you, it is a perfect destination for a long weekend getaway. So it is a wonderful town. I do not want to beat it up at all because it is beautiful. It is styled really cool. Everyone was kind but it does not fit our travel style. So it and, is time to get on the road. And I would just like to add, in terms of themed resort cities, themed resort towns, and there are many beautiful ones around the world, I would put this up there at the top with any of them in terms of the quality, the walkability, the different variety of things to do. The food was just beyond belief. But the snow said, not in our wheelhouse. Yeah. If you're headed to Brazil and you want to spend a couple of days somewhere, put this on your list because it is a cool place. But like I said, it's time for us to hit the road. Get on down the road, find some nature, find some not so expensive stuff. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.